Hey, what's happening guys? Matt Ogis here and this video is in response to the question that I get asked so often and it's, Matt, how do I grow this muscle? For example, Matt, how do I grow my chest? Or how do I grow my arms? How do I grow my quads? Etc. This, hopefully this video clarifies a lot of um, the confusion that individuals who ask these kinds of questions tend to have. I mean, the long and short answer to that question is, okay, pick an exercise that works the muscle you wanna grow and get stronger at it. You know, within a certain rep range over time, get stronger at doing that exercise with good form, um, with a good range of motion, boom, there's the answer. But honestly, there's, there's, there's many more questions that seem to follow uh, if, you, if you give that answer to somebody, right? They're like, oh, okay, cool, that makes sense. But I mean, they kind of already intuitively knew that. So this video is going to hopefully help individuals, especially beginners, my friend at the gym, and even intermediate lifters who, or self-proclaimed immediate lifters who perhaps feel like they're in, in, in a plateau um, or just stuck and kind of need to refocus on some of the basics. So without any further ado, let's dive right into um, the three keys or the three fundamental truths for beginners and how to maximize building muscle. All right, so got some words written behind me. Let's dive into the three fundamentals of lifting. You know, these are things that I have incorporated for the majority of my lifting career that honestly, most of the successful strength athletes or bodybuilders out there have incorporated into their careers, um, especially nowadays more and more, you know, these are the fundamentals that are taking people to greater heights. Quite often, um, those around you, those around me in the gym who are struggling, those who feel like they aren't making any gains, are usually people that neglect these things. Okay, they're usually people that, you know, typically they'll run a, blow, a bro split, nothing wrong about running a bro split where you got like a chest Monday, back Tuesday, leg Wednesday, you know, shoulder Thursday, arm Friday, you know, you train each muscle once per week. Um, nothing wrong with that necessarily, but you know, quite often they're doing that, which isn't bad, it's actually great, it's fine, but they're forgetting these things, you know? They might be training chest once a week, every Monday, right? But they're doing a different chest workout every Monday. They're never actually getting that much stronger, you know, to the capability that they could, especially, you know, if you're always doing different exercises all the time, switching things up, you're actually missing out. You're missing out on the adaptations, which is the whole point in the first place, okay? So that's why we choose key lifts so that we can focus on one thing, one exercise, that's gonna be like the exercise for those certain muscles and for that certain movement pattern, you're gonna to aim to get stronger at it with good form, and that's how you're going to see the most rapid improvements in size and strength, okay? Sometimes you'll have people out there like, yeah, I'm trying to bring my bench press up, uh, so I'm gonna start doing a machine bench or dumbbell bench instead, and then go back to bench press and you know see how much it goes up, it's like, Dude, the best way to bring up your freaking bench press is to bench press. Perhaps even bench press more frequently, right? Let's get let's jump right into it. What are the key lifts? You know, these are these are exercises that quite often correlate to the development of an individual, right? If you took this person and I was able to get this individual to focus on their key lifts and add 50 to 100 pounds to these specific lifts, they're gonna look like a totally different person, all right? Whether that's three, six, or 12 months from now, they're gonna look like a completely different person. You could look like a completely different person. You could reach those physicals if you are to add some serious strength and numbers on the key lifts that I'm about to write down, okay? So what are the key lifts? But honestly, here's the thing, we're not actually, I'm not saying you have to do any of these. And mostly I'm talking about movement patterns more than anything. But I do like to throw out specific exercises just to get people to focus on that exercise 
also because these specific exercises are easy to improve on. They're easy to load over time, okay? And these are barbell movements for the most part, right? So first of all, we got pushing, pushing, pulling, right? Pushing and pulling, when you push something, chest, shoulder, triceps, when you're pulling something back, it's gonna depend on how you're pulling it, right? Back, biceps, okay? Traps, etc. Then you got lower body exercises, lower body pushing, lower body pulling, more so we call that hip hinging or deadlifting. So over here, let's write down squat, squat, deadlift. Now, listen, am I telling you that you absolutely have to squat? No. Am I telling you have to deadlift? Like, yo, you have to do the conventional deadlift. No, not necessarily. The thing is, it's so effective and it's efficient, okay? If I could just get this kid to take his squat using good form from 135 to 225 for a set of five, his quads are going to be significantly bigger. And then if I can get him to take that squat from 225 to 315, his quads are going to get significantly bigger, okay? Now, of course, it's a journey to get from here to there. It doesn't happen magically. It takes work, it takes time and effort, but generally that should be kind of the short, mid and long-term game plan, right? In the short term, we wanna fight these small battles and make small improvements. And in the long term, we wanna see these large gains in strength, you know, 25 pounds here, 50 pounds there, that you realize only over time, okay? Now, I can even categorize these key lifts a little bit further because there's different ways you can push, you know, you can do it horizontally and horizontally would be like the bench press, right? And vertically would be the strict overhead press. The strict overhead press, one of my favorites, you probably have seen videos of me doing that. For pulling exercises for your back, you can do it vertically or horizontally. Let's start with the vertical. My favorite one is the weighted chin up. I'll write that down right now, weighted chin up. And then we have rows, right? Rows are horizontal typically. You do barbell rows, cable rows, dumbbell rows, etc. I'll just write down rows. You know, honestly, one of my favorites that's kind of underrated is the Penlay row. All right, look that up, the Penlay row. It's where you do a barbell row with dead stop reps and you keep your back about as horizontal as possible, okay? The crazy thing is, if I can just get more people to focus on building serious strength in these key movement patterns, you know, I, I, I could basically tell them, just back off, come back in a year, and I'm gonna be like, whoa, you made some serious gains, okay? As opposed to, you know, most people enter the gym, they think, oh, I'm gonna annihilate my chest today. I'm gonna destroy my back today, or I'm gonna kill these quads today. And they'll then decide, okay, I think I'll use the, that, this exercise, that exercise, that exercise. And then the next time they use different exercises and different rep ranges, and they'll constantly switching things up. You know, that is not the way to go. Instead, your workouts are structured around these six primary movements. And you don't even have to train four or five, six days a week. You know, all of my novice programs, I have people training three days per week, right? And I have people squatting, you know, two or three times a week, one and a half to three times a week. I have people bench pressing and doing chin-ups one and a half times per week, overhead pressing one and a half times per week, you know, more than once a week. That way they can get more frequency in, more total volume for that certain lift, more practice at that lift, and they could focus on increasing their strength over time with that lift. That building up that strength in those lifts that utilize the muscles that they wanna grow, that is the name of the game, okay? Key lifts. Your, your workouts are structured around key lifts. They're not necessarily, I mean, they shouldn't, especially if you're kind of more on the beginner side of things, you shouldn't just be focused on, yo, I'm gonna annihilate shoulders today. It's better than nothing. It's gonna be effective. And in fact, it's probably a great way to go, especially if you're still focusing on good form and progressive overload. But if you could also focus on key lifts, barbell movements that you can rapidly increase your strength on, you know, with these barbell movements, you could, you could increase the weight five pounds per session until, you know, you've milked that out, right? With your squat, you can add five pounds to your squat each workout. For a beginner, that's basically how we train them.
Uh, you could even use micro plates. You could add 2.5 pounds. But for a lot of movements, say dumbbell movements for the dumbbell bench press, the difference between this size dumbbell and the next size dumbbell, it's actually a 10 pound jump, right? Because you go from five pound dumbbells to 10 pound dumbbells, you went from 10 total pounds to 20 total pounds. That's quite a big jump compared to barbell movements where you can make these smaller jumps, okay? And now what, what, like why squat when you could do all of these different leg exercises? Why deadlift when you could use uh, that, you know, the back extension or whatever? You know, these movements are gonna have much more carryover to all of the other movements versus the opposite, okay? You get strong at that leg press, cool, you can have strength or you can build, you know, size in your quads, whatever. It's not going to build that squat up as much as, you know, getting stronger at squat is going to, of course, build your quads, build your squat, and also build that leg press, okay? You're gonna get a solid bang for your buck and carry over by focusing on these key lifts. Now, for the most part, most novices are doing mostly these lifts, I'm not saying they can't ever do curls or tricep extensions, I program those too, but for the most part, getting stronger at these movements, it's also working secondary muscles, like your buys and tries, and for some degree, for especially beginners, squatting and deadlifting is you'll likely see some growth in your calves without even actually working them just because it's the first time they've ever been worked in their life pretty much. Now, quite often for more advanced lifters, I like to throw in, you know, the incline bench as another key lift to really focus on the upper chest, you know. After you've gotten pretty damn strong at these, I like to throw that in as the next thing to get strong at. You know, you build your strength in that from 135 to, you know, 185 for five to 225 for five, you will see serious differences in your upper chest mass, okay? And also another favorite lift of mine that isn't a key lift, it's not a barbell movement, it's not a compact movement, is the side lateral raise. It's kind of a bonus here, side lateral raise. And I like to just include that for fun because to be honest, it's probably like one of my favorite accessory movements, my favorite um, isolation movements because combined, if I had to choose just one more exercise on top of these, I'd throw that one in, you know, more so than curls, more so than triceps because by building up the shoulder width, you can really increase your aesthetic. If I had to pick the most like, the one other movement to throw in there, your time constraint, you got a wife and kids, you're busy, you work 80 hours a week. I also throw in those side lateral raises if I had to choose just one exercise, okay? So these exercises are the ones typically I recommend the most to begin with. Doesn't mean you can, you only have to do them. There's so many alternatives, but getting brutally strong at these and also getting in some volume with the side lateral raises and of course getting stronger with that over time that is how physiques are transformed. Okay, that is how people break out of plateaus, you know, by stopping mindlessly working out and simply getting structured and focused on some key lifts, okay? Now the next thing I wanna talk about is form. Form. I don't know how the hell it became wrong for people to have good form. I don't know how. Like it's weird because some circles, they see form and they respect it. Like they understand it. Now, typically lifters who are really strong, lifters with impressive physiques, they typically respect good form, okay? But for some reason, you have certain you know classes of people who are all about hard work. Um, that's the only thing they know. They're not very sophisticated in terms of their training. They don't focus on any of these things and they just go to the gym and destroy muscles. Quite often, they don't see the gains they want. They look at other people, assume they're on steroids in this horrible cycle of just trying to work harder and harder over time because they're not applying any of the basics. They're not even applying good form. Don't ever end up in that circle. Never end up in that vicious cycle, okay? The reason why form is so important is because quite, quite often, you know, if you're doing these key lifts, you're trying to get stronger at them, progressive tension overload, you know, over time, and this ties directly into this point, sometimes, you think you're getting stronger, but really all you're doing is swinging harder, okay? I could go back in my log books, for example, and see my bench press back in, um, back in 2012. And I look at my, what I'm bench pressing right now, it's not a super huge focus, but still one of my key lifts. 
Um, and it, it says that I'm pretty much doing like the same damn weight. You know, how could I not gain any strength in like five, six, seven, eight years? How? How? Uh, that's because, well, my form back then, if I was to go look at a video, I'm doing touch and go bench and I'm like dropping the bar, so much leg drive, blasting it up like that. Like there's literally barely any control on the way down. Whereas now my bench press, it's so clean. There's so much stimulation in my chest. It looks beautiful. You know, it's, it's like the time under tension is totally different. The quality of the lift is so, so different. I can't even compare the two, right? Quite often people end up going in the opposite direction. You know, they'll start with a good bench press or start with a good lift. And then over time they'll be adding weight, adding weight, adding weight and their form gets looser. They, you know, shoving things more, the form goes out the window. Obviously that's also how you increase your risk of injury. Um, it's going to likely, you know, give you more aches and pains over the years and those things add up. You do not want that, okay? Plus, when form kind of goes out the window, you're really not working the muscles that you're trying to work, okay? You might actually be getting less stimulation you know, typically about net neutral or maybe even less stimulation in the muscles you're trying to work uh, if you're using just way more than you can handle throwing form out the window, okay? This is something you can and should be proud of, right? You don't start increasing the weight until you have technically sound form, right? With the squat. If, you know, if your squat doesn't look good, you're not adding weight, okay? It might might be frustrating it might force you to address some things you know you might have to work in somewhat of a more limited range of motion for a, a point in time and then slowly increase that range of motion get stronger and better at these different ranges over time you know you might have to do that okay a lot of times like for example the deadlift a lot of people just can't bend down they got no um, flexibility in their hamstrings so i have people deadlift from uh, platform, you know, platforms on the sides of the weights, you know, using a range of motion that they can utilize. I also have them, you know, do Romanian deadlifts a little bit so they can build some mobility and like, get into these positions for the deadlift where the bar is typically, you know, closer to the ground to start off with. So by focusing on form, you know, you're really setting yourself up for the long run, both more gains, more size, more safety. And this is, this is half of lifting right here. This is damn near half of lifting. I know a lot of people like say, man, I love this shit, I live for this shit. And their form is whack. They're constantly getting injured. They're not making any gains. It's like, dude, you love not making gains apparently. You don't love lifting because if you did, you'd want to improve your form. So put your money where your mouth is. If you love lifting weights, even if you don't, this is one thing that you really should be focusing on. This doesn't mean don't train hard. In fact, you should train hard and if you're focusing on form, you're training even harder, okay? It's using physical and mental strength. Like you're, okay, there's no comparison, right? You wanna be training hard and with good form. And that's the point. That's when you add weight. That's why I wrote tension overload, progressive tension overload. Because for example, if I was to look at my log books, my 2012 or 2011 bench press or 2012 bench versus now, the numbers say that I'm equally as strong. It says that I'm about the same, but the tension is completely different. You know, the amount of tension I get from one set of bench press now is totally different because the quality is much better than years and years and years ago, okay? So when I write progressive tension overload, I'm basically saying increase the weights over time, but keep your form the same. You know, increase the weights, the reps and sets over time, but perform the same quality of a negative, right? Quite often we'll throw another plate on, we'll ignore all these different things. And then we'll be like, we'll drop the bar, get it up and we'll be like, oh my God, I got stronger. It's like, oh no dude, you just dropped the bar faster. Oh my God, you're killing me. So focus on these three things and only if you're maintaining your form and maintaining the general tempo that you'd like to use, Say it's, you don't have to go slow on exercises, but you end up finding that good groove. Like say this is how I'd probably bench press.
Now, I actually like to use a pause, but regardless, you find over time, because you're practicing each lift at least once a week, right? Even up to one and a half, two, or possibly even squatting three times a week, whatever it might be, you know, you're practicing and you're keeping it consistent and you're only increasing the weight while all the other variables are held constant, okay? Don't increase the reps or your load on the bar while throwing other things out the window, all right? So what are some ways that you can increase the overload, right? Now, typically I like to have people train with sets of five. So, you know, whether that's three by five or five by five, for a lot of these barbell movements, for especially novices, you know, you start them off with just sets of five, let's just say, because honestly, it doesn't really matter a whole lot, uh, whether it's sets of five, 10, 15, or whatever, for me, these beginners, we simply want people to be utilizing good form, so on and so forth, kind of going over some basic beginner stuff, but this person would increase the weight on the bar until they couldn't, they reset the weight, drop it 10%, increase the weight on the bar every week until they couldn't, and I'm talking directly to my friend at the gym right now too, they reset it a couple times or whatever until they can no longer using these sets of five with straight weight, using the same weight across all sets. You know, once you can't do that, can't increase the weight, then you go into what's called double progression. That's probably the last point we'll talk about in this video, double progression. Now this is something that just a lot of people, like it's crazy how many people aren't utilizing double progression and it's really just one of the most foundational um, progression models it's practically the most basic outside of just increasing the load right double progression would look something like like this okay so let's say we're doing like three sets of say bench press three sets and let's just say we were doing well, basically you'd go, if you were kind of stalled out on these sets of five, you're like, man, my form is good. You want to look at your form. My form is good. My recovery is good. I'm eating enough. Um, I don't know why the weight isn't going up. So maybe you'd drop the weight just a little bit and you start utilizing double progression. So for example, you might use three sets of five to six reps. Okay. Three sets of five to six reps. You might have never seen it like this before. You might have seen a larger gap, like three sets of four to six. But, you know, fundamentally, you'd probably want to start with a smaller gap before a larger gap, you know, the newer of a lifter you are, most likely. So you'd want to milk this out. So let's say last time you did three sets of five, this time you try to go for three sets of six. Once you get that, you increase the weight, you drop it back down to three sets of five eventually that becomes a little difficult then you have to make progress even slower then you start doing three sets of say four to six reps four to six reps okay on the bench press okay you hit three sets of four cool next go for three sets of five go for three sets of six add the weight bring it back down to three sets of four maybe eventually you're just adding one or two reps per workout that's another way to progress in your strength without really having to manipulate all these other variables, okay? The crazy thing is a lot of people don't even utilize this, like this most basic thing, and this might be you. If this is you, it is the time to start utilizing these concepts, okay? So, you know, you're stuck on your bench press at 135. Try 135 for three sets of four. Did that happen? Cool. Now, try to get three sets of 135 for five. Got it, cool. Now try 135 for three sets of six. Got it, cool. It might not happen you know, as smooth as that. You might add one or two reps per workout, whatever, but once you get to the top here, increase the weight, bring it back down. Sorry, camera died. But you know, honestly, there's no perfect rep range, if, in case that's what you're wondering. What's the exact rep range I gotta do? You know, For the most part, I do like the four to six rep range for building strength as a beginner when you're using double progression on a lot of these core lifts, a lot of these key lifts, um, especially it's the first exercise in the workout. You know, if it's kind of a secondary or tertiary exercise, it's second or third in the order of exercises in a workout. You know, sometimes as a compound lift, you might like six to eight reps, okay? 
as more of a you know beginner kind of lifter for example and you're you know you're hitting three sets of six next week you might try three sets of seven next week you might try three sets of eight as soon as you can do that add weight bring it back down to three sets of six that's the sort of thing um do you ever use higher reps well quite often yes you know for more of the isolation movements you might use you'll still use double progression method but you might be using let's just say like the 10 to 12 rep range or perhaps the 12 to 15 rep range okay and then of course you know every you can still use this rep range for these core lifts as well so let's say you're squatting twice in a workout right you might have one of those workouts this rep range one of the workouts this rep range um, or perhaps, you know, this, you know, three months of bench pressing you did in this four to six rep range or the six to eight rep range. And then the next, you know, month or two or three, you might bench press in the 10 to 12 rep range. Okay. So regardless of which rep range you're exact, you're using at a certain given time, you're going to be using some sort of progression model, um, to work your way up in strength and forcing yourself to progress using double progression is a great way to go about that okay now as you get more advanced there's different ways of progressing um, obviously they're much 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 slower these are much quicker so for the most part um, for the most part most lifters are going to be using linear gains and double progression method so that's it for this YouTube video. Um, you know, honestly, these are the foundations of lifting for the most part. I didn't cover every different rep range. This isn't the only rep range you necessarily need to use. There's other ones that you can use as well for different exercises. But for the most part, you know, these are the concepts, right? It's not just about strength magically occurring to you by training your ass off in the gym blindly. You know, it's actually about choosing key lifts, performing them properly, and on a daily level, trying to increase performance, right? Especially towards those beginning stages. You're every day looking back and, okay, is my form good? Okay, I'm gonna try to increase what I did. Slowly but surely, these small wins over time, you know, rep here, rep there, you know, five pounds, decrease the reps, add reps next week, blah, blah, blah. These small battles accumulate and turn into huge gains over time, you know, even if you're just adding five pounds a week, it's going to add up, okay? Five, 10 weeks down the road, that's a totally different strength level, okay? It's gonna get slower and harder over time. Sorry about that, camera died yet again. But yeah, that's it for this video. Please like if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. And if you got a homie who needs some serious help, like this dude or girl does not know how to lift, they're stubborn, you know, just want to crush themselves in the gym or they just whatever you can send this video to them okay remember focus on the key lifts good form progressive overload catch you in the next video see ya